Hi everyone, third time is the charm, I guess. Uh, tap into your creativity is starting right now. So uh, we have guest artist, Ryan uh, Gionelani. I hope he is um, here again. I'm so sorry, you guys. It just keeps pausing by itself and then it just removes me from um, from the internet. I don't know me out, but um, he is joining us. And I'm hoping for that a third this, time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hope that we stay. I don't know why. It just is, it, it pauses on me and it freezes the camera. So I don't know yeah, what to do about that. I'm not sure. I have a good connection. So yeah, it's... no, and I have a great connection too. So I don't know. So just let's Instagram. Just... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So welcome, Ryan. I am so excited that you're here with us today. I'm excited um, to be here. Yeah, so um, tell us a little bit about yourself. And first and foremost, um, you are from Louisiana, and we just know that we just you just had a huge hurricane come through. So um, are you yeah. safe and that everybody around you is okay? Yeah, yeah, everybody around me is okay. Um, we lost power for a couple of days. There's still a lot of people without power. So, you know, the, the energy company around here has a lot of work to do still um, a lot sure. of down power line poles trees you know just it's not as bad as as it sounds but uh -huh. it's, it's bad for those people without the power oh just someone just said there is no sound i can hear you fine can you hear me okay yeah i can hear you okay so i think that they just need to maybe put their volume up or something i'm not sure so anyways, um, welcome. I'm so happy and excited that you're here today. And well, thank you for um, having me. Yes, yes. So tell us a little bit about first your name, where you're from, and where is your studio? Uh, well, my name is Ryan Gentiloni. Um, it's Italian, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm from New Orleans, and I live in Kenner. Uh, it's a little bit out the way from New Orleans, about 15 minutes. Um, I grew up in Metairie, which is right next to, to Kenner and New Orleans. Um, and I went to school at the University of New Orleans, where I got my Bachelor in Fine Arts. Um, and I focused in photography and sculpture. Wow. So um, that's a lot. I mean, that's great. I mean, it seems like from a very young age, you always wanted and felt like attracted to art how did that look like for you well i was always surrounded by art my brother um, he's an artist as well and then i i consider my father an artist um, he did jewelry and glass engraving and uh you know he's very he's the craftsman type you know he can work with his hands and and figure out anything that you give him right. and um so i've always been surrounded by it and you know, at a young age, I've been involved with art classes and going to high school, ceramics classes and college, you know, taking everything from figure drawing to 2D to uh, sculpture, you know, anything that I could get my hands on. So uh, what kind of art does your brother do? Um, he does mostly, uh, it, it, I guess it's, uh, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. His passion is, is animation, Okay. Um, but he does a lot of like two-dimensional characters and um, he has his own video game series and uh, he, but he can do anything. He's, he's very talented. He could do, you know, realism or abstract or whatever, but his passion is, is the animation. That's really great that you were surrounded by an artistic family. I mean, that's very rare. That doesn't really happen too much. I don't uh, consider my family an artist family. I said artistic, of... artistic yes. family. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of a difference, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so in college, were you drawn? You said you did photography and drawing and 2D and 3D. Were you drawn into one more than the other? Um, I was always drawn to photography um, because of the hands-on, you know, learning aspect of it. It was around the time that digital was kind of, you know, becoming more popular and obtainable and the, the resolutions were getting better. So darkroom techniques were kind of on their way out. 
And that's what we were learning about. We were learning the darkroom techniques. And, and I really loved that about it. And it kind of, I don't know, the whole, the whole digital age kind of made me, I don't know if jaded is the right word for it, but it pushed me away from photography. And I, I focused more on sculpture and then, you know, painting and, and all of those. Um, but I've recently come back to photography. You know, I, 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 I took a trip for two weeks with my girlfriend, now fiance. Um, Congrats, that's so <laughs> thank exciting. You. Thank you. Yeah, we took a trip to a, a few different national parks and I took my camera along with me and, you know, just got back into it. Good for you. And I think that once we, you know, once everyone gets a chance to see your work, they'll see the connection between nature and texture um, that we find in nature in your uh, paintings and sculptures. Sure. Right? I mean, yeah. that's very much who you are. Yeah, it's definitely a, a huge inspiration to me, you know, just nature in general and, and the textures and, and feelings you get from that. Right. And, um, and what is your side job? <laughs> oh, well, my side job, which is my main job is working for George Dunbar. Um, and he has taught me quite a lot since working for him. Um, I've been with him for about almost seven years now. Um, and that's pretty much where the, the metallic leaf Part of my so can you talk a little bit for people that don't know who George Dunmar is because he is an incredible artist and um, how lucky you are that you have been his apprentice apprentice I mean really this is like a, a true treasure for you yes yes it is it's a it's a once in a lifetime opportunity that not very many people ever get and and it, it's been a, an absolute, you know, honor and privilege to work with him. Um, and who he is, is a contemporary abstract artist. Um, and he's been doing art for quite a long time. He's 93 years old and he's still, he's still but at he's it. He's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean... he has a show uh, opening this Saturday, actually. Not, not today, but the next, uh, you know, the next Saturday. <laughs> Oh. At 93, we yes. want to be him. Seriously. Yes. yes. I mean, He's still trucking along, still, still moving around and, you know, doing pretty much all the art himself. And we're just there to help him, you know, as assistants. And, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible. So you learn the leafing, the gold leafing and the silver leafing through helping him. And, you know, you, but now you apply it in a very different way than he uses it. Yes, yes, yes. He, um, he, a lot of his work has gold leaf incorporated into it. Um, and, and I, I feel like we use it differently, um, as far as the process and the, the finished result. Um, but yes, I have, I, I learned a lot from him as, you know, time went on. Right. And those techniques, you know, a lot of people don't teach him anymore. And it's it's old world techniques that that have been used for you know thousands of years, with rabbit skin glue and and you know water gilding and bowl and all these other things that you know. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, I think it's pretty remarkable that at ninety three. Tell me how how has COVID affected you guys or or not? Have you um, well, has he been be able to work and have you been able to work? He, he's, in the beginning, we were, we were very cautious because of his age. Um, <clears throat> and we kind of worked from home for a while there. And, you know, we would, we would make trips out to his studio in Slidell and, you know, pick up something to bring back home to work on and then bring it back. And, you know, kind of, there, there's, there's myself and, and two other assistants of his, and we would take turns, you know, going back and forth, just trying to, um make sure we distanced ourselves enough from him yeah and i think as it as it developed and as time went on we kind of felt safer about coming back to work in the studio with him 
and you know we still you know take the the precautions that we need to to, oh, yeah, to keep sure. him safe but he uh he's very much a person who who needs to continue to work like that's that's who he is he he has to every day he's there you know no matter what if he's not feeling good he's there yeah if, if i feel a... the same way actually i feel like i have to work every single day in whatever i'm doing because otherwise um yeah. it just feels very weird and the time the concept of time right now in this period of the pandemic has been a very weird concept i don't know if you find yourself thinking the same thing yeah no i, I feel like time has passed very quickly but not at the same time right and and i know everybody can't wait for it to be over <laughs> <laughs> yes that is very true so your studio where you actually work um is it somewhere that you have to drive or is it in your home or how do you um, where is your studio that that was a big thing for me um in the beginning i was working out of a spare bedroom in my home but it was too small to you know do any large scale work. So I decided to build my own studio in my backyard. And and that for me, I need to be able to like wake up on a Saturday and, and say, I want to create art today and just walk, you know, 20 feet to my studio and start creating, not have to get in my car and drive to the city or, or you know, anything like that. Yeah, that's, that's really great. And um, I can't wait for you to start giving us a tour of uh, your artwork. Um, sure. If you can talk to us a little bit of your process before we go there, and then you can show us more, and we can talk about each of the artworks okay. that you have prepared for us. Sure. Yeah. So I start. I usually start with a, a canvas, a stretch canvas, um, <clears throat> as my surface to put the elements onto. Um, and then I'll I'll have various elements like these uh, bamboo sticks back here, um, which I will arrange on the canvas in, a, in an abstract fashion. Um, and I will also have uh, different collected materials. You know, I'll find plastic netting or, you know, like a bottle cap or, or, or some kind of wooden element and I'll put it into the painting and then from there I'll, I'll glue all of that to the canvas and then add texture to it with um, modeling paste. So you you use you reuse uh, recycling materials it sounds yes, like. Yes I'll, I'll try right? to recycle material or you know find something outside or, or somebody gives me something you know I'll incorporate it into the painting somehow. How did that idea come to your mind? How did you decide that that was something that you were attracted to? Um, I think the, the fact that, you know, these different elements that you see just in everyday life, you know, it, it, people perceive as trash, um, somehow that has always been in the back of my head that maybe it's not trash or maybe it's it doesn't belong, in a, <laughs> maybe it doesn't belong in a landfill, you know, maybe it belongs somewhere else and it can be created into a piece of art, you know, something beautiful. Yeah. So it, I feel like, um, you know, you record your, your journey, I guess, um, when you're outside and then you bring it inside your studio and then you start working with that recording from being outside. Am I kind of close to that? Yeah, I mean, there's no, you know, physical recording, but it, it's, it's recorded right, in, right. in my, memories and and you know experiences that that i've been throughout my life you know and your photographs right so um i think they intertwine yeah definitely okay ryan so let's take the phone now and uh show us around i'm super excited okay let's see all right so this is my small but uh, somewhat organized studio and over here uh, let's start in this corner I guess this is my okay. rack of useful materials um, things that I would use on a daily basis when creating something like this is you know bottles of modeling paste 
or you know is it wood a glue. thick modeling paste that you use um yeah it's 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 relatively thick um i can show you um right over here i have some actually made up and you can see that it's it's pretty thick yeah that's you pretty know, thick it's like a thick thick icing and then does that um dry clear or it stays that way um, whatever color you want to mix into it, it, it will dry that color. So like this color is actually, you know, this piece right here that I've been okay. working on. Okay. Um, so it's Which drying that, that purplish yeah. color. Yeah. But other than that, you know, I, I'll have, you know, different tools like my, my miter saws to, to make framing or, or, you know, different do you, make your, do you make your own framing then um i i don't make the actual pieces but i i do frame my own work got it um and um and i see a lot of tools that i don't necessarily use on my everyday but you do <laughs> yeah <laughs> i try to use that you know anything and everything like you know sanding blocks and and uh d different you know staple guns and things like that N normal normal stuff yeah. Um, but I also have like, uh, you know, different trowels that I'll use to put the, the modeling paste on with, yeah. um, you know, pallet knives, things like that. Are those, um, cement, um, things that you have there, are there little sculptures? Which ones? Right there. These? Yeah. Yeah. Those are, uh, different prototypes that, you know, I've, I've kind of, got ideas in my head and, and have worked on like the some of those have turned into like this this little sculpture here and um, that's made out of what it's actually um <laughs> you're gonna laugh but it, it's actually these corners that <gasps> come in packing no way and and you know i'll just find different uses for stuff like that instead of just throwing it away um, oh my I god, a, I love that. It almost have, looks like a little bronze um, sculpture. Yeah, I have a piece up here, which is one of the first pieces that I made. And that's those little sculptures, you know, kind of tearing through the, the That's canvas, so, so cool. <laughs> wow. That is so cool and different. And what a way to repurpose. That's yeah. awesome. So that's kind of, you know, the the tools and things that i use and and you know it it turns into something like this okay or wow. this or you know I, I have a lot of my pieces hanging up just so i can you know have an idea of of, of what i'm working on and and sort of a series of of work wow that looks incredible um, and then the, my, you know, my favorite thing is, is the, the detail of everything. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about that and how you can get that patina or, you know, silver leafing to look so, you know, it, it does give you an effect of being bronze or, you know, a, a metal. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of it is the, the under color. Uh -huh. um, the color underneath really makes the leaf feel a certain way. Yeah. Um, but when, when it comes to like making something bronze looking like this. Yes. Um, that, that's actually, you know, a glaze that I'll put over it and, and it'll give that effect of, of a bronze. Is it acrylic glazing or what kind of glaze do you use? Um, it's acrylic, yes. It is. Wow. I mean, it is spectacular. We need an incredible like lobby or office building for that. <laughs> yeah, I would love for that. I would love to see that in a, a, yeah. <laughs> some yeah. kind of commercial location with a large wall. <laughs> can you show us again that piece from far away so we can sure. appreciate that? Yeah, sorry. I kinda... No, no, that's okay. I know you have to juggle a little bit. I'm dancing right? around the yeah, studio. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's, it's, how big is that? This is four feet by seven and a half. Okay. That's a, yeah, that's a mass. Is that um, on board or canvas? 
It's actually on canvas. It's it uh, is. two two canvases that I've attached together. Okay. Um, so it has extra structure. So let me ask you something. Why do you work on canvas versus board when you're putting so much, you know, weight on it? Well, that that's the thing about it is it it, it look this this piece is on board. Um, and this is one of the, the first ones I did can like Can you come that. closer so we can see the detail on that? Um, I did this one on plywood. And okay. it, it, it just turned out to be very heavy. Okay. And I wanted to lighten it, you know, some kind of way without compromising structure or anything like that. And so I switched to canvas. Right. And I, I felt like I could do it you know, without the canvas ripping or collapsing or, or anything wow, like that. Wow, I'm impressed. And that's, that's, you know, people will pick it up and they'll be like, I thought that this was going to be, you know, 100, 200 pounds. And right. you know, really, it's, it's 40 pounds. It's not, not heavy at all. <laughs> exactly. And um, that sculpture, totem, uh, caterpillar, I don't know what you call that, uh, what is that? What is that made of? Let me get this chair out the way. Um, this one is a kind of a departure. I wanted to come off of the canvas and, and do sort I'm trying to get a better angle on it. Sorry. Um, I wanted to, you know, come off of the wall and, and have it more sculptural, but it, it's made of different um, wood slats that I've, I've had collected and um, string tied around it. Uh, there's some plastic netting in there. Uh, let me see if I can get up close and get a detail on it. So you can see right here. Yeah. This is actually so, the string, you know? Yeah. But you know, because you have it, there's so much going on that you can't even tell that that's what's, you know, holding it together. It feels like it's part of it. Yeah, I wanted it to, to have that organic feel. It really does. It looks like a tree trunk or, you know, like bird nests or, like I said, a huge caterpillar or something that is, you know. <laughs> Some kind of pod. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's amazing. And, um, okay. Oh, let's see your little ones there. These were these were sort of a newer series that were inspired by um, space, you know, the the very planetary uh, feel to them. You know, like I, I think of the moon when I look at this one. Yeah, for um, sure. But I, you know, I love the the negative space around them and trying to, you know, get that into my work because a lot of my work does take up the whole canvas or you know whatever surface I'm working yeah, on. Yeah it definitely feels that you can breathe much more on those because of the white space mm -hmm. so um, I, I kind of like I'm drawn to them because the other ones are really saturated so this ones are just they breathe a little better mm -hmm. and I know you have a little cement um, block that you well it's not a block but it's this like it looks like a fossil <laughs> But it, it does uh, look like a fossil. I know, right? Will you explain <laughs> to us what, how you got that? Um, so I was working with uh, cement to make a base for a sculpture. Yeah. And I had some leftover cement, and you know, I had I had an idea in my head to to pour it into this this kind of hole in the ground, and and see what would happen. And uh, I'm glad that I did because you get this really unique texture and and you can see like grass and and other elements just embedded in there like like you said a fossil yeah it totally does i mean it's it's recording exactly what you know what was in there so um that's fascinating i can't wait what you're gonna do with that <laughs> Let me make a, a little necklace out of it maybe <laughs> 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 no, I mean, in a bigger scale when you, yeah. you know, I think that's going to be a really cool thing. So what are you working on now? And show us like maybe the process of how you start. Sure, sure. Um, right now, I am working on this large piece that that's what I've been dancing around. <laughs> yeah, um, wow. And and it, it starts out with the canvas, you can see that underneath. Yeah. Um, and then I'll add different you know, sticks like these are yard sticks that 
um, our cutoffs, um, and then, you know, the bamboo and, uh, there's string in here. Um, there's a, a ruler here. Uh, so just there's no things. rhyme or reason, right? I mean, there, there, there is, but it's not something that, that is obvious, you know, it's, so it's, it's just, organized chaos. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so once, once I get all of that, you know, the, the, the sticks and various strings and things like that, I'll put, um, different layers of the modeling paste, which will give me the, the texture that I'm looking for. Okay. Um, this, this piece is, is far from done. Um, but when it gets closer to done, I will, you know, coat it out to, to prime it. And then this one, I, I've decided to actually leave the bamboo. bamboo. The, these are actually uh, pieces of reed. Um, but I'll leave those uh, exposed. exposed. Yeah, yes. I love that. And Whereas, that's going to be the piece that you're going to be donating, right? Yes, this is actually the piece that will I will be donating. So I can't thank you enough. And I can't wait to see it finished so we can um, sell that. And 100% of the proceeds will go to Feeding America. So um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Um, so just let me know when that one is done. And um, We'll make sure to, you know, send it out to the world and, and hopefully it will get, you know, sold and you will get this beautiful piece of artwork um, and, um, and, and you will make a donation and help so many people in need of, of food right now. Yes, they need it definitely yes. right now. Yes, yes. So, so from there, you know, something where I didn't choose to expose the elements, this is, you know, completely covered and painted. Um, and then this would be leaf would be the next step from here. So how do you find your leaves? Like, where do you buy them? Or how did you, um, how do you know? Well, working with George, uh, I've, I've, you know, come across different ones. Um, a, a company that I really like is, is Sep Leaf. Okay. Um, and they'll send you a, you know, a color chart like this, which shows you different uh, leaf colors and, and variegated leaf and and you know just what is everything. variegated leaf for someone that doesn't know that uh variegated leaf is just a, a leaf that they've changed chemically like with acid or something like that um, and it, it gives you different uh colors within the leaf so you can see that there's like this is probably some kind of copper leaf with an acid wash on it so the whole, the whole, so does it have a pattern or not necessarily? It's just like the color that comes. I've, I've seen them with patterns, uh -huh. um, but these are more, you know, like just organic. Got it. Yeah. Have you used those before? The variegated? Yeah. Um, I have. I'm trying to think if I have anything. Um. I, I didn't really like the way that they, they turned out. So I ended up, I think, washing over them with an acrylic. Got it. Yeah, I would think that that would be, you know, a little bit uh, hard to work with, but I don't know. Yeah, it gets, sure. a little, it gets a little distracting depending on what scenario. Yeah. So then you choose your leaf and then you go back to the work. Um, yeah. Like and that then, uh, piece. Hmm? To that piece. Uh-huh. And then so you... I'll put the leaf on here um, using, you know, like a, a, a water-based glue. Um, and then from there, I'll brush it off. And I don't, I don't have uh, a piece prepared like that to show you. That's okay. Uh, but, it, you know, from there, it'll, it'll, it'll go to this one's kind of an in-between stage here. So you can see that it's... It's very bright. It's very reflective. Yes. Um, so is that the underneath painting of that? Is that a black? And then when you apply the silver leafing, it just kind of comes through a little bit? Yeah, you can see that, you know, there's different pieces that don't adhere to to the color underneath. Yeah. And you'll, you'll see that coming through. Um, it, it it's to, to me it's very bright and very reflective 
Yeah. So that's when I, I'll use, you know, the, like this, this is the same leaf, but you can see the, the difference. Yeah. You know, this, big, this one's very yeah. shiny and the other one's a little, a little more dull. Dull. Yeah. Oh. Do you need to spray it at the end with something in particular? I, I like to use a, uh, a polishing wax. Okay. And, and it, it gives you that, that subtle tone down of, of the, the brightness to the leaf. So by doing that, do you take some of the, um, the, the brightness of the, of the, in this case, um, you know, the silver leaf, does it, does it dull it down or does it bring it up or? Um, it, it can dull it down and, and you can actually repolish it to, to get more, um, not bright, but, uh, I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now, but. Um, no, just to bring the, the brightness up. It's not maybe the right, correct, uh, word that we're using, but, um, so you polish it with what exactly? Um, just like a uh, polishing rag or a polishing brush or, um, you know, steel brushes, which yeah. will even work in some I just cases. know that working with, you know, with any kind of, you know, metal leaf, it is so delicate. And, you know, once it's like done, like put there, it's like there. You can't yeah. move it. You can't, you know, it's not like paint. It's just a very different way of working, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and. If it's done correctly, it it's you can be pretty rough with it. You know, you could you could take a steel brush to it and burnish it to the point that you want it. You know, to that luster that you want it to be. Yeah, I I think that you know, like you've mastered the you know the silver leaving or the gold leaving. I mean, because you can't tell. It almost looks like it's a patina versus a silver leaf. And that that's um, yeah, that's what right? I want to go for. Yeah. And um, I know you have a sculpture there that I love, um, that it looks like bronze. And again, it's not, but it's you using, um, you know, this, um, the new one. Yeah, uh, that one. Mm -hmm. So to get it in a better light. Yeah, it looks like a piece of bronze, but it's so not. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's actually, um, that is, a, I think, I want to say this was a variegated leaf, but it, it changed colors on me whenever I would try to seal it. Oh. And this is the color that it, that it actually would change to. And it's so strange, but I love it. I love it, gives it. it that that bronze feel and and what is the material uh made of um the the structure itself the, yeah the structure itself so this is actually plaster that i've I've carved out um and then affixed to one another to create this kind of dividing uh plate and um you know it it's it's plaster and then I'll seal it, I'll paint it. So you and created a mold it. and then poured in plaster? Uh, no, not for this one. I, I didn't. I didn't take a mold of it. Um, it's just. It's just straight. I, I had a block of plaster that I, I carved out, um, and then you know went from there. I would like to to take a mold of it and then cast it in, in actual bronze. You should. It's gorgeous. I love that. It, it's simple, but yet it has all the carvings and it has dimension and it has, you know, I love the simplicity of the base, which is just a cement block. Um, you know, I think it's a, a cool thing. And Thank I you. know right next to it, to your left, uh, yeah, you, that um, sculpture, where was that sculpture? Um, this, this sculpture was actually at the Ogden Museum. Um, for their Louisiana Contemporary Show, I think, in 2018. And uh, what are those rods? Are those bamboos? Uh, those are, are just wooden dolls. Okay. But I, I've staggered them to... I, I wanted to create a sense of balance with this piece. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I have a graduated base and also a, a graduated 
um, row of, of bamboo dowels. And, you know, from every angle, you can kind of get that feel of balance. Like if you look down low, it's actually, you know, balancing on the surface. Yeah. And, and is that wood on the bottom or not? This is plaster as well. It is. Yeah. See, it's so interesting how you treat your plaster because it really gives it a sensation of wood or, you know, bronze or just a, a whole different, you know, thing. It's crazy. Yeah. And that, that's, that's actually copper leaf for this one. Yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. I love that. Thank you. And then you, you made a little model for it right next <laughs> yeah, to it, which guy. I love. Yeah, yeah. I love it. That was my inspiration. Yeah, good my for you. Head. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Ryan, are you going to demo anything? Um, I can show you, like I was talking about earlier, um, you know, just that I have different types of, of bamboo sticks and, and reeds and things like that. Um, and then the canvas, obviously, uh, string that I'll use and then my box of random collected, you know, plastic netting and stuff like that. Um, so usually I'll start with, you know, a blank canvas or I will coat it out depending on how I'm feeling or depending on the piece. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just, I'll just kind of go from there and, you know, place, place these things where I'm, you know, it's it's more of an emotion than than a, a scientific process. It's it's how you're feeling in that moment, and you know what what you want to do with it. And you know, I'll break things up and and tuck them in, and you know, kind of. It's very geometric it. too. I mean, it's like finding your own language within the nature. But you know, it's definitely you know um, that I love that you just did that. Yeah. And then, did you, you know, just throw that in there yeah i did <laughs> i love that but I, I'll, I'll do that with the string too so I, I don't have a lot of string cut up right now um but i'll, I'll just kind of you know toss it in there and, and let it organically find its way or you know if there's a, a space that i feel like needs it i'll you know place it more delicately um, it's like, um, what is that game called? That Chinese, um, oh, like pickup sticks, <laughs> pickup sticks. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, it makes me want to take one without moving the rest of the things because then it will rearrange it completely. But I like the composition and how, you know, your train of thought goes. I, I think it's, it, it must be a very freeing way of, of working. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't like it, you just, you know, take it start all again. and start over again. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny because we think that only with brushes you can paint and it's so not true and we are seeing it right now. Right. Yeah. You, you just need to get like like my like George says, you just need to get the energy into the painting some kind of way. It doesn't have right. to be. I mean, we brush. call it activation of the canvas and this is a way of activating your canvas. Right. You know, and and it's a really cool, different way of approaching an artwork. Um, you know, we, we think that only, you know, as a painter, you can just use brushes and paint and, uh, you're proving us wrong. You know, you can use this and really feel that same sensation of activation of the canvas, of mark making, of, you know, being free in your strokes, yeah. um, with sticks. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you like it, and you know, it's. I'm hope, hoping that people learn from it and you know apply it to their their own work. Yes. So um, let me see your face again for a second. Um, and um, if you, because I mean, you're a young artist. Um, you have a lot of experience because you have worked under someone who is incredibly talented. But as a emerging artist yourself. Where do you see yourself going? How, um, how do you see art, you know, nowadays for young people like yourself? Um, I, it, it's, it's hard to say, you know, it, 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 it's kind of all over the place. It, there, there's, there's still the traditional, you know, gallery scene, but there's also, um, and we kind of talked about this, you know, the P 
people are are selling their own work. They're they're having websites that they've designed themselves and um, you know consignment shops and retail locations and things like that. It, it's the the possibilities are are endless, which right. it, it's overwhelming, but it's it's a good opportunity, you know, for for young artists yeah. who can't get into a gallery. Right. And um, do you have a community of artists um, near you that you can just, you know, go and, and talk with? Yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely communities of artists all over New Orleans. I mean, it's, it's a huge, huge art place. Um, I, I'm part of um, the, the Where You Art uh, gallery community. Um, and and it's, it's basically a community of artists that that they represent and, 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 you know, they're, they're all there for you if you want to talk to them and, you know, bounce ideas off and, yeah. you know, it's, it's great. Yeah. Deborah is asking it, what was the name of the gold leaf company that you use? Um, it is Sep leaf. Here, I'll get you. Sep leaf products. Yes. Yeah. It's good to know because there's so many companies out there and you don't know what you're working with. And um, do you use glue before you apply the gold leaf or the metal leaf? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, would you apply it with a glue, the special glue and then apply the leaf or how do you apply it? How do I apply the leaf? Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a, th people use different mediums to- right to you to uh, glue it down and there, there's oil based there's water based um, I use water based um, it's a gelatin product um, people will use rabbit skin um, the oil I've based. used the spray glue I don't know no that... no it, it's it's something that like I don't really have um, I don't have a good example to show you that's right okay now. That's okay. I personally, when I have used it, I've used that spray like glue and then it just like, that's what I was saying. It's so hard once it's there, it's just there. So yeah. maybe with a water base, maybe it's easier to move it around. I'm not sure. Water, water base is more forgiving um, okay. as you're laying the leaf. Okay. Um, because if you don't like it, you can, you know, if, if you do it quick enough, you can wipe it up or, you know, reapply the, the water glue over it. Yeah. Um, whereas oil based, you kind of you got to know where you want it, and as it tacks up, that's you know you have a window to put the leaf onto the surface. Got it. And what would be some tips you think you would give to um, emerging artists? Uh, just keep at it. You know, keep keep plugging along and 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 finding your your voice and and finding you know your art style and if it's not always gonna work out right away and and you're gonna get discouraged but just just keep keep on making art you know good That's for all you, you. Can do. <laughs> yeah i love your spirit i love your soul you're a great person i wish you but the best of luck I can't wait to see the finished piece that you're going to give to um, tap into your creativity, creativity uh, COVID art project. Um, it's thank very you. exciting. And um, thank you so much for being here. And just tell us where we can find your work. Um, you can find my work at uh, Wary Art. It's uh, the local gallery. Or you could find it online at ryangenaloni.com. Um, and I'm also obviously on Instagram, so you can yeah. find me there. Yeah. And any any questions you have or, or, you know, anything at all, if you want to just reach out to me, feel free. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Say hi to George for me. He doesn't right, know me, but tell him I'm a huge fan and to keep <laughs> going. And, uh, you know, congrats that. on your engagement. It's so exciting. Thank and you. Yeah, so I'm sure we'll keep in touch and um, keep making art every day. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. See y'all later. Bye.